What is good? We're back with another episode. Maybe transitioning off the rookies a little bit, getting no. into the uh, startup, back into the dynasty startup life for for a little while. We got a great guest for you today. We got my man Jay Wayne over here. Glad to be off the rookies for a second, for sure. Uh, so this is kind of our first. We'll talk rookies, though. We are. Oh, for sure. And first little introduction back into the pool of uh, the deep end of, of startups. And, and we got a guy who's just a well-oiled machine here. It's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of information. Uh, we only get through 10 rounds. Uh, but be That's sure not bad, to, though. Be sure to subscribe, like, comment below. If you're listening on the podcast, five-star reviews. If you want a great shirt to support your boys, RevelryBrewingCo.com. You can get you an FF Dynasty shirt. And as always, you can go to Patreon.com backslash the ff dynasty and become a patron at a five dollar holla and support your boys for one month or the whole year whatever you want uh, we got a discord we got drafts we got uh some extra podcasts here and there uh all sorts of stuff for your pleasure let's start the show all right so today we're going to be doing a super flex startup mock and we got our guy mason from the flock how you doing, buddy? Thanks for joining us. Pretty good, pretty good. Happy to get this going. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna start the draft here. Um, we got a two minute clock, I believe. We might pause and, and chit chat, but we're we're gonna pretty much draft against sleepers ADP. Usually, we would do it with the patrons. I think you do it with your patrons as well, a good bit. Uh, checked out some of your videos beforehand. I'm sure this guy doesn't need much of an in, uh, introduction here. He's crushing it. So, hats <laughs> off to you, buddy. And I'm excited to, to chit-chat with you, go back and forth, and, and see how this draft pans out. You ready to go? Yes, sir. I'm ready All when right. you are. Let's do it. All right, so we're off. I'm running. We got Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, and you're in the 1-3 hole. Yeah, that's why I chose three. Literally just wanted to be lazy, wanted to have no decision at all. I first <laughs> chose six. Then I was like, okay, um, how am I going to ch- pick between Jamar Chase, Kyler Murray? I don't have to deal with it. Al, let's just take three. And let's get whoever falls between Mahomes, Allen, and Herbert. Super simple. Super simple. Um, all right. Uh, so after you picked, you picked Herbert, then Jefferson, Burrow, then Taylor goes, Kyler Murray, Harris. When does when does Taylor come in as a pick for you? When is when is what quarterback has to be gone for Taylor to be somebody that you're picking in Super? Right Bowl? in this range at six. It's going to come down to personal preference. If mm-hmm. I I find like in ten team startups, you're going to actually see a lot of those third quarterbacks in particular fall so far that I'd be more willing to punt the quarterback position. But if you're playing into 12 team, 14 team leagues, supply and demand it does make it where it's tougher to pass up on like Kyler Murray, even a Lamar Jackson to Deshaun Watson, a little bit higher on Watson than most. Yeah. Us too. We, we really like uh, Watson. He went to Clemson. So tough to get any of those yeah. good Clemson players past him. If this was tight end premium, would you take, would you take Kyle Pitts where I'm at right here? I think it would be in play with Kyle Pitts. Obviously, it's the quarterback play. It, you have to go Jamar Chase. The thing with Jamar Chase is even if he has a down year this upcoming season, his value is so insulated. Like if he, say, tears his ACL week one of the preseason, he's still a first-round starter pick next year. Yeah. He, he is so insulated. Yeah, so I'm, I'm between I'm between Chase and, and Lamar here. I, I like to risk it a little. I, I, I'm okay risking a little bit quarterback-wise. Jason is, is not... He, he wants I hate it. the best quarterback possible. I need, uh, I need some good quarterbacks. How do you feel there? Is that is it a priority to, to get two starting quarterbacks for you? Or are you uh, kind but of... Two good, like two top-end ones, you know? Are you going two quarterbacks in the first three rounds? That is basically what it boils down to. Well, it definitely depends on, like, the opportunity cost. Like, back at the beginning of the offseason, you were able to get, like, Russell Wilson at the end of the third. That Now it's a lot harder. Now you're yeah. going to have to go out there and pay up. I'm definitely not going to be taking, like, the teardrop quarterbacks. Like, I think once you get to the Trevor Lawrence of the world, once you get to, like, Justin Fields, Rodgers, there I'm a little more willing to just wait a few more rounds and maybe bring in a Derek Carr. Mm-hmm. But if you still have access to the Stafford, Russell Wilson, or – Hopefully the guy I get at the 210, we'll look at that in just a second. Hopefully he makes it. I, I think you have to kind of pull the trigger. All right. So I went Lamar. Um, before that, it was it was Burrow, Taylor, Kyler Murray, Najee Harris, and then Lamar at 1-9 for me. Then Jamar Chase, which I would have felt just fine doing that as well. Um, then Kyle Pitts. It's not even premium, and he's going. Uh, so Jason's on the clock here um, with back-to-back picks. Um so you would have taken Chase over Lamar? 
I, I think it's really up to you. Yeah. I am not going to fault anybody one way or another. It does come down to like if you know the people in your league that is going to play into it because some people just stop drafting quarterbacks and you can end up getting Tannehill in the 11th. Right. And if that's going to be the case, I'm a lot more willing to grab Jamar Chase here at the 109 because then later on you could pass up on Rondell Moore to grab Ryan Tannehill. And like I'd rather have the combination of Tannehill and Chase than Lamar Jackson and Rondell Moore, just for example. But it's going to depend on your league. Right. So we've, we've been pretty immersed in rookies. We've done a lot of rookie mocks, and this is our first kind of dipping our toe back into uh, startups. Uh, we were doing some in the very beginning of the offseason, but haven't really touched one since. We've done a couple with the Patreons people since. Uh, so I'm excited to do this. Typically in a mock, I probably would have taken Jamar Chase, but I was feeling Lamar Jackson just... I would probably take Jamar Chase in most cases just to see how the rest of my roster would build out because it's a mock here. So I'd like to see what yeah. I could get. But I went ahead and took Lamar Jackson here. What do you got, Jason? Well, with, you know, Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase gone and jo Jonathan Taylor and, and Najee Harris, like I'm not even going to go to any other tab but the quarterback tab right here. Uh, I got back-to-back -back picks. So, you know, sometimes with that 2-1, you got to reach a little bit because you know you're not going to have a chance for a little while to take a guy. You know, I watched several videos today with Mike Florio and Chris Sims talking about the legal situation with Deshaun and, and the, the NFL code of conduct policy. And, and you know, if, if what you're doing is detrimental to the shield, they're going to have to punish you. I don't see any way that, that Deshaun Watson doesn't miss a decent chunk of the of the games like anything if anything less than half the season people are going to lose their minds because because they were pointing out like Roethlisberger and Zeke Elliott getting six games for like basically almost nothing you know compared to 22 allegations you know and and now he's having to admit that there were acts performed although consensual still detrimental to the shield so I know you're gonna you're gonna miss out on Deshaun for a period of the season and I don't know it feels like we're about to get some verdict on it but without knowing I feel fine taking Deshaun here if they come out and say he's gonna care. miss two, two I years don't care. you don't I care mean, how much he's time getting, he's not gonna get two years that's ridiculous like that's not happening what about a whole year I don't think he's getting a whole year even what if, if he, he gets, gets a whole, whole year? year let me get him all right well let's go ahead and take him then <laughs> <laughs> he's a top five quarterback reg like just regardless and then honestly, to I, don't, me, anyway. I don't know if I'd rather have Dak or Russell Wilson at this point. I guess I guess you probably would should go Dak based on the age. I mean, everybody's going to say Dak. I mean, I prefer Russell Wilson, but Dak's, you know, Dak's a first round pick in most. What do you feel uh, about that? I know you like uh, Trey Lance uh, and Matt Stafford. W what would you do here? Mason? I think here you have to go Dak. I mean, if you were treating this as a real league, you're just going to get so much more trade value from yeah. Dak Prescott. He doesn't have the rushing upside that he did three, four years ago. So I see an argument to put him in the same bucket as Wilson, but the Dallas Cowboys have been top three in the NFL in pace of play. Like yep. over the past three seasons, they scored the most points last year. So I, I think you kind of have to go Dak Prescott. You're getting five younger years with Dak Prescott. So, and he's not going anywhere. His job's secure. And, you know, we're not planning 10 years out here or anything like that, you know? So uh, I heard you make that point on one of your shows. I thought it was a great point, you know, three to five. That's, should be your window here which that makes almost an argument for russell but i'm down taking dak that was kind of what i was leaning mason pushed me over the edge there yeah so when i'm back on the clock here tight end premium maybe i consider mark andrews here um i'm probably gonna pass um i was really hoping that swift would get to me here because i want to i typically want to try to get one running back here but it's not looking great for me um Javante's probably got to get pushed down a little bit for me. Christian McCaffrey's a meh. I, I like him, but hard to draft him right here at 2-4, I think. I'm going to go ahead and take Russell. Get two quarterbacks. All right, so there goes Mark Andrews right after that. Javante Williams, Christian McCaffrey, CeeDee Lamb, Austin Eckler, and now you are back on the clock. I know your guy is Mark Andrews, so that probably put a little hurt in your heart right there, huh? I got a couple guys here. Brees Hall, the second we had the NFL combine, called him a top five dynasty running back. He gets Jeez. the draft capital. He is a top five dynasty running back. The only guys Love you can it. have after him are the four players that went ahead of him in this draft. There's no reason, like in a real league, like this is why you should be drafting with your people on Patreon over. I don't have Patreon anymore. We have locals. It's the same thing, but you shouldn't 
be going up against these sleeper bots. You're never going to see Austin Eckler go at the two and nine here. You're never going to see Eckler go ahead of Jalen Hurts, go ahead of Brees Hall. Now, right. I'm a little conflicted on what I should be doing here because my guy is Trey Lance. Officially, my guy's Trey Lance. But I know in every single league, if you go through and ask everybody, just send it out in your group chat. Hey, do you all want Trey Lance or Jalen? Everybody is spamming the chat. Jalen Hurts, Jalen Hurts, Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts was pretty much a top five quarterback round, quarterback five, quarterback six this past season on a per game basis. Obviously, you get A.J. Brown, one of the most efficient wide receivers in the NFL coming over. I'd love me some Lance. If you go through and if you look at Trey Lance and the fact that he was a top 15 draft pick, not only top 15 pick, they took the 12th overall selection plus two future first to go out there and get Trey Lance. It gives him the job security, even though I know he hasn't started to get. I, I get it. I get it. But it gives him the long term job security that Jalen Hurts doesn't have because the 49ers can't right. afford to go anywhere else. Feels like Jalen Hurts is on a one year prove it right here. Trial. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And they also have two first round picks next season. So mm-hmm. Jalen Hurts doesn't have the job security, even though it's crazy to say. And Do I know it. everybody watching this hates me for saying no, it right now. But it. historically speaking, if you're looking at the draft capital and the team investment, that's what it means, regardless of what the coaching staff is saying. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my guy, Brees Hall, and hope that one of Jalen Hurts, Trey Lance, make it back to me at the 3 of 3 so I don't really have to make a decision. What what gives you the confidence? I, I got a real hard time pulling. I'm a Niners guy. Look I at love, that. I love, I like the pick of Trey Lance. I like what they could be with Trey Lance. We saw a little bit of Trey Lance. Gave you a little bit of un... Uh, it was fine. They, they kind of the kept, kept the training wheels on him a little bit, ran the hell out of it. I think they're going to start the season by running the shit out of the football. Um, what gives you the confidence to want to take Trey Lance? Is it just draft capital and the landing spot? Over the last 15 years, you've had four quarterbacks be drafted inside the top 15 picks, which Trey Lance has more draft capital than this. We're just drawing the threshold top 15 picks, to be fair. You've had four quarterbacks, top 15 picks in the NFL draft, and more than 60 rushing yards a game their final season in college. Mm -hmm. Kyler Murray, Deshaun Watson, RG3, and Cam Newton. Those four averaged 42.7 rushing yards per game their rookie seasons. And if you look at quarterbacks that had more than 42.7 rushing yards per game this past year in fantasy, Lamar Jackson, Jalen Hurts, Josh Allen. Not saying that Trey Lance is a bona fide stud NFL quarterback, but I am not. An NFL talent evaluator. Nobody watching this video is an NFL talent evaluator. That is why time and time again, I continue to evaluate quarterbacks by what the NFL tells us with the investment into them. Ignore what the dynasty community thinks and look at the NFL draft capital combined with two key things. You can't just draft them in order of their draft capital combined with their rushing upside, which matters so damn much in fantasy and the situation they're stepping into. And last year, according to PFF, The 49ers were the third best offensive line in the NFL. They have Debo Samuel, George Kittle, Brandon Ayuk, and Kyle Shanahan. So it is a combination of so many different things. The team investment, the rushing upside, and the situation he's stepping into. Not saying that he's a great NFL quarterback, but neither is Jalen Hurts. He doesn't have to be to be a good fantasy fantasy quarterback. quarterback. So it's it's easy for me. We go Trey Lance here at the 303. Don't even think about it. And that's a great point with neither is Jalen Hurts, but the job security is there with Lance no matter yeah, what happens this year. The not, Shanahan is dying to have a quarterback to unlock that third dimension of what he can do of just being like, hey, rushing. you got it. all of a sudden you have to guard this entire field because of the rushing upside of my quarterback. He's been so limited with his quarterback as far as Kirk Cousins or Jimmy Garoppolo or whomever. He had RG3 there for a minute. Um, or Matt Ryan, he turned him into you know a Pro Bowl or took him to the Super Bowl. Um, so I mean, I get it. I just have a really hard time. So you would have probably taken him in the second round there, if it was not a real necessarily draft. because if you're looking at the quarterback tiers, and I would say if you are just in a regular 12 team start, you're not having to draft Trey Lance here. Like if I pull up keep trade cut right now, Lance is going to be significantly behind here. I'm personally very high on him. I guess he is the 30th player off the board. I will admit, I think. A little bit of that has to do with me every single video coming out (laughs) and screaming how freaking awesome Trey Lance is going to be for fantasy football. But I think in a lot of drafts that I get sent over there on locals, like Trey Lance is going round four, round five consistently. So 
Yeah. I would never advise someone to take him at the end of the second. What I would say is just take that 210, trade it for the 306, 307, and get an extra piece added on top and then take him there. All right. I like that. I mean, I think I, I think, I in, think in most Lance of our, does get more respect than you think. I've I, th- seen I think in, in pretty much all of our Patreon startup drafts, it's it's second or the third turn right there where he goes. So I think you're right right there. That's why I kind of asked you. I, I have such a hard time taking him there, and that's kind of where I felt like you had to take him. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I gun, like gun to my said. head, and I'm not exaggerating when I say this. Looking at this draft board, if I had to, I would take Trey Lance at the two hundred two. Okay. Um, so, but since Zach Wilson doesn't have the rushing upside and doesn't get into that, uh, situation that you love, you're, you're not interested in Zach Wilson or necessarily Justin Fields, even though he has the rushing upside. No, Justin Fields. If you look historically quarterbacks that fall outside the top 10 in that range, that's going to be where you get the Dwayne Haskins That's where you're going to get the Josh Rosen, where if you go through and you fail back to back seasons, you can get replaced. Whereas quarterbacks that go in the top three, let's let's list some names, quarterbacks that went in the top three that were bad season after season after season. And it didn't matter. Blake Bortles, Mitchell Trubisky, these quarterbacks can fail miserably. Everybody can see it yet because the team went out there and based everything they had into that one selection of them. You can throw Jared Goff, Carson Wentz into this list. They are going to be starting forever they're going to play that through that rookie contract they'll start four years and what i'm saying with trey lance is i'm not an nfl talent evaluator i can't tell you if he's going to be good for that four-year stretch but what i can say is hell if he has that rushing upside where he can be jalen hurts for a fantasy football standpoint and he is jalen hurts from a fantasy football standpoint with kyle shanahan an elite offensive line an elite tight end an elite receiver and brandon Ayuk is your wide receiver too Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm not yeah. sitting here yeah. ever saying that Trey Lance is going to be a top 10 NFL quarterback from a talent perspective, but he can be horrible from an NFL perspective. And if you go through and look, look at Zach Wilson and the situation he's in, Zach Wilson this past year posted a 5.3 adjusted yards per pass attempt. If you look historically, that gives Zach Wilson almost no shot to pan out. That puts him in a tier of guys like the people we were previously mentioning mentioning someone like Josh Rosen with how bad that rookie season was really the only quarterback you've seen come back from that over the past decade has been Josh, Josh Allen. Allen. Everybody yeah. wants to compare it with Josh Allen, but there's a group of 15 failures to every one Josh Allen ex- success. So if you're trying to go out there and make that bet, you're just way too confident in your ability, in my opinion. And yeah, so Zach Wilson, if he's bad at quarterback for NFL purposes, he's going to be bad in fantasy as well. Cause he's not going to run the ball. So right. Trey Lance can be bad, but good in fantasy. So there's no floor threshold, and, and you don't love the landing spot. You don't love a couple of stats for Zach Wilson. Look, I'm not really in on Zach Wilson, and, and I really struggle taking Garrett Wilson in rookie drafts. Uh, you know, I really liked him coming in and really struggle taking him in rookie drafts, but he, he seems to keep falling to me, so I'll bet on the talent um, and, and take him. And, you know, I like the idea of Elijah, Mitch, or Elijah Moore a good bit. So are you, you out on pretty much that entire offense? Not Brees Hall. Brees Hall, running backs okay. can just overcome lack of offensive efficiency based off the pure volume they can see. You like that Wide Shanahan receiver? tree there? I, I'm not I'm not reading into that. Okay. <laughs> Carrying it all. What I'm looking at is I'm looking at the prospect profile and I'm going to be looking at the investment they made into him. And he profiles to be an Ezekiel Elliott, a Dalvin Cook level player. Like in our prospect model, he checks every single box we're looking for. But I am worried about the wide receivers. I initially kept Garrett Wilson over trail on Burks right after the NFL draft, because I mean, we went through and we live streamed the second after every single selection. And I gave my initial reaction. I put out our rankings that night of the NFL draft. We had everything out immediately. So of course we are going to have to do some tweaking over the next week. Whenever I get just the time to really like let everything digest. And initially I was not willing to move trail on Burks ahead of Garrett Wilson, But after thinking about it enough with the lack of offensive efficiency there, yeah, we did end up moving Garrett Wilson down behind Traylon Burks. I still think the wide receivers in this class are so damn talented like Garrett Wilson that I'm going to have them ahead of Kenneth Walker. So I currently have him at the 104. Okay. I like it. All right. I'm I'm on the clock here. Uh, We rambled on there a minute about Trey Lance and these quarterbacks. Jalen Waddle went next after you took Trey Lance, then Matthew Stafford, then Devontae Adams then Derrick Henry, then Stephon Diggs. Um, so I'm, I'm back on the clock here. I'm looking at Tyreek Hill. I'm looking at T. Higgins. Would you take any of these rookies over T. Higgins? 
Oh, I personally would not. Yeah. So where, well, this is a question we've been asking everybody in this industry mock that we're doing. Where in the first round of a rookie draft would you trade a random 2023 first, like to get out of that pick and get the random 2023 first? Like, like I think many- you have a conversation once you get to the 106. After you get past the tier of Brees Hall, Drake London, Traylon Burks, Garrett Wilson, Kenneth Walker, then I think you can have the conversation at the 106. If it's super flex, is Kenny Pickett in that conversation or no? Uh, Kenny Pickett is going to be in that tier of six, seven, eight with Chris Olave, Jameson Williams for me. I, I don't think you can say Kenny Pickett's a lock to be worth more valuable, be more valuable than a 2023 first. So Jameson Williams doesn't quite make that cut though. You you would he'd be right on the edge for you. Yeah, exactly. If someone wanted to make an argument that you needed to have Jameson Williams over a 2023 first, sure, you do you. I'll hear you out. I think if you want to make an argument for the opposite end of the spectrum, you do you. I'll hear you out. I think that's about where the value lies. All right. Like it. I'm going to go ahead and take T. Higgins here. Got two quarterbacks. I usually would be a running back guy. I'm pretty heavy running back, but I'm not also not going to force a draft. And it seems like the last couple of years – you really kind of had to take an elite prospect or a good running back up in those first couple of rounds. And it seems like this year we're getting some running backs being pushed down a little bit. Um, And it seems like you're able to make up a little ground in your running back room uh, for some guys that people don't really seem to love all that much anymore. What's your, what's your thoughts on that? It really does depend on the draft that you're going to be in. We're just at such a unique time in that the generation, like the historic 2017 running back class, these guys are now 27 years old. And that's right about the tipping point historically over the past eight seasons for these guys to fall off. That's why I'm saying you're never going to see an Austin Eckler go in the second round of a startup here. Even I've seen Dalvin Cook falling a little bit further. So you are getting these running backs at a quote unquote discount because we don't really have too many elite level young players outside of the guys that obviously go at the very beginning, like Jonathan Taylor, Najee Harris, DeAndre Swift and Brees Hall. I think over the next two years, we are going to learn so much about the running back position and how these guys are going to project later on in their NFL careers because we've never really seen this before with yeah. this 2017 class all aging at once. Yeah, and and it seems like we never quite got a full – like we, there's always sort of a changing of a guard in these classes, and, and we never quite got the full – Monty of like we were we thought CEH could be in there we thought uh Antonio Gibson could be in there we thought Cam Akers could be in there we thought JK Dobbins and then and some of those guys could definitely still be in there for sure but they've all had injuries and different things so they're they're, they're getting their ADP pushed down a little bit which you know I've never been a huge Cam Akers guy uh but I will take the take the gamble on JK Dobbins here and that's that's a guy I'd be trying to kind of maybe target on the way back around uh what's your thoughts on that yeah, definitely. There's just so much uncertainty right now with like the Acres injury. J.K. Dobbins is uh, honestly, I think we kind of understand who J.K. Dobbins is. I don't think we have to worry about the injury too much. If you look at a nine month timetable, hell, he's going to be good for the preseason. Like you yeah. don't have to think about it. Right. What I would be a little concerned about with Dobbins is this is a team that has never really shown us that they want to have that prototypical bell cow running back. I mean, they went out there, tried to sign Melvin Gordon earlier this offseason. When they didn't get Melvin Gordon, they went and signed Mike Davis. That's not the end of the world for J.K. Right. Dobbins because there are two starting running backs right now are coming back from season ending injuries. I mean, if you sure. were a general manager, you'd probably be trying to do the same thing. I, I think Dobbins is a fine selection. I don't really have too many hot takes on him. Like if I go look at my exposures right now, I'm probably right in line with the market on Dobbins. Yeah. And are you you taking another trip around with with Saquon or are you out on Saquon? I, I'm personally loving the value I can get on Saquon right now. I still think there's a really good talent right there. I like we're probably in the best hands we've been in offensively for New York uh, in, in quite a while, at least we think. Um, so what's your thoughts there? I actually really like the idea of going and getting Saquon Barkley. I have a video coming out. I want to say tomorrow or the next. So it's probably already out if you all <laughs> upload this a couple of days from now. But with Saquon Barkley, if you go back and look at that rookie season, which I brought this up in a live stream earlier today, and people were getting mad at me saying, oh, why are we going to 2018? Because 2019, he dominated, but he had the ankle sprain, so the sample size is smaller. 2020, tears ACL at the very beginning of the season. 2021, not healthy to start the year, injured halfway through. And then when he comes back in the back half of the season, he's playing in the worst offense in football with Mike Lennon, who had an adjusted yards per pass attempt less than some running backs yards per carry. It was laughable. <laughs> but if you're looking at Saquon Barkley in that 2018 season, It's off the top of my head, so I could be wrong. But he had over 70% of that team's offenses 
carries per game and then over 15 percent of their targets per game i believe the targets per game was actually closer to 20 percent. and if you look at running backs that have been able to accomplish that over the past three seasons it has only been christian mccaffrey in 2019 with his historic season and then leonard fournette as well in 2019 obviously kind of went under the radar because the jacksonville jaguars 2019 were a bottom five offense but leonard sure. fournette was a volume hog it's very very impressive with what saquon barkley is able to do so you're essentially making a bet on the new york giants offense because we know he has the talent yeah all right so after i took t dalvin went off tyreek went off um and you're up jay wayne well i got saquon at the top of my queue and i think i think y'all just both just sold me on that uh it huh. doesn't feel great but this is pretty good value you know i didn't have to reach for saquon here at, at 312 um so i think i'm gonna go ahead and take him does is there ever an instance where you take three quarterbacks in the first like three or four rounds mason yeah, definitely. I would say be very careful about it. This is why Dynasty Fantasy Football is so damn important about just your format, format, format. You have to adjust to the format. So I want to say this and put a massive asterisk that if you're in a 10-team Superflex League, never think that you're going to be able to hoard the quarterback position because there's going to be more than enough to go around. Right. But our original Patreon League about two years ago was a 16-team Superflex, and I probably drafted <laughs> five quarterbacks in a row because I was just looking around saying, y'all don't realize – if these guys dry. will dry up very yeah. quickly. 12 team is honestly the perfect balance where you have to make sure you're getting them at a value. So if you're getting them at a fine value and you're comfortable with it, yes, it's going to be possible to hoard the position and dominate the market and force someone to trade with you. But it's not going to be as easy as it would be in a 14 team or a 16 team league. All right. Word. Yeah, I, I like taking three quarterbacks in general and maybe not super early. I like getting a good third quarterback maybe a little bit later that you can use for trade bait because someone's going to be thirsty at some point because someone's going to punt and then fuck up and grab their second one's going to get benched or get hurt or whatever. And you that that's a huge valuable piece is that third quarterback in a super flex. But if you reach too early for it, then you're basically forced to trade, which is almost kind of like putting you in a bad situation too, because people know that you need to trade this guy. So now you, you've lost a little bit of leverage possibly. Um, you know, I could, I could easily take Trevor Lawrence here. I don't, I don't think I'm going to do that. If it was tight end premium, George Kittle would probably already be off the board. Uh, J.K. Dobbins, I have no problem taking J.K. Dobbins. I love the offseason that he had. They didn't sign Melvin Gordon. They didn't draft a high profile running back in the draft. You know, they took Tyler Beatty, I think, in the fifth, possibly sixth round. I can't late. recall off the top of my head. But late, you know, and I like Beatty. I'm down to take Beatty late in rookie drafts, which sometimes he goes undrafted. But that doesn't scare me off of Dobbins at all. And then it, and then I think Gus Edwards is coming off a worse injury than even J.K. Dobbins is. So, And like you said, they should be getting back to the running style that they want to. If we can get this Lamar situation figured out, that man, he's a probably hiring agent. But um, <laughs> figure it out. Get your money, man. What are you doing? Go get a, go get a god-awful amount of money and never think about it again. But mm. just going to play that out? I don't, I don't understand that. But I think I got to just take... DK Metcalf here. I love DK Metcalf. I've never been able to get DK Metcalf before. I don't own any shares of DK because he was always so expensive. Uh, and now there's a little bit of a discount because he doesn't have a great quarterback, but they could easily sign Jimmy. They could trade for Jimmy or Baker, and when that happens, then he's probably going to get a little boost, and he's still only 24 years old. I think he just turned 24. Feels nice scooping DK Metcalf right there. I don't know. I just just a big, you big home run swing. Are you in or, or out on DK? DK is interesting just because if you're looking at the Seattle Seahawks offense, they're going to go from historically having a quarterback top 10 in just yards per pass attempt to now possibly with Drew Locke, a bottom five quarterback in the NFL. And that directly correlates to fantasy production at the wide receiver position. But what I would say is DK Metcalf has increased his target percentage in this offense over the past three years. He actually, I believe, got up to 26% this past season, which puts him in an elite range. So, I definitely was screaming that DK Metcalf was a horrible draft pick at the beginning of the offseason, but that's when he was going in the mid second. So once you get to the fourth, I think he's 100% in play. All right. So I'm, I'm back on the clock here. Uh, I went DK, Kamara, T Law. Um, are you drafting Alvin Kamara at all? Um, just depends on the price. I would say like here, I'm definitely not interested in Kamara, just yeah. given the age. And going back to what we were talking about with Chase earlier, I really like to think 
through a range of outcomes on what my player could be worth next year if he hits versus if he fails. And I am slightly concerned about drafting like a Derrick Henry, a Joe Mixon, a Dalvin Cook, a Kamara with where they went in this range. Because if they do have a down year, you can see their value tank quickly compared to, say, Drake London being on the top of the draft board right now. Even if Drake London has a down season, you know that his value is not going to be hurt too much. Look at Rashad Bateman, who was a much worse wide receiver prospect last season and what has happened so far. So right. personally, I'm probably not taking Kamara, not taking Dalvin or Derrick Henry, unless you start with a pure win now right. construction. But usually right. I don't like to do that. Usually I like to stay a little bit balanced through the first few rounds and give myself the option to go where the value lies. Yeah. So I'm, I'm on here. We like Kenny Walker a good bit. Mm. Um, I like J.K. Dobbins here. I actually don't hate Travis Etienne here. Um, but I think go Tigers. I think I might have to take Drake London here. Um, I don't love taking rookies uh, this early in a startup, but I mean, I think I'm just going to go ahead and pull the trigger, see how that feels. What are your thoughts there? I, I if I would have taken him if he fell to us. Now I think I have an easy pick, DJ Moore. Yeah, but with Drake London, obviously the issue is quarterback play, but it's dynasty. That situation can get figured out next year. Right. We don't know. So, I, I would honestly say that the London quarterback play situation, I think, is easier to find out how they fix the quarterback spot in Atlanta than you would assume with Seattle because Seattle, they could trade for Baker. They could go through and they could trade for Jimmy G. I feel like there's a cap because we know that team's going to be good. Right. That team's good. They're, they're not getting CJ Stroud. They're not getting Bryce Young next year. There's no shot. Right. There's an outside chance that Atlanta is just so damn so, bad that they end up getting CJ Stroud next season. Right. When well, we've talked about that in, in mocks with – Ritter and where the value should be is that like it just seems very nobody would be shocked if the Falcons were top five and replacing quarterback next year um so I definitely agree with you there so you're taking DJ Moore here over Deontay yeah, DJ Moore, very boring pick I mean it's very hypocritical for me to talk about bad quarterback play for a <laughs> wide receiver hurting their value and then following it up with DJ Moore but just going back to what I was speaking on with target share percentages earlier I mean DJ Moore is a prototypical alpha wide receiver in Carolina. He's extremely young, a cornerstone asset to build around for the next three years. It's never going to be too exciting until you get a quarterback upgrade, but he has dealt with some of the worst quarterback play throughout his entire NFL career now. Please don't be upset if I get this wrong. But first year, shoulder injury, Cam Newton, laughably bad. Second year, I believe, Kyle Allen. Third year, Taylor Heineke. This past season, Darnold. Darnold and Cam. Yeah, like he, he has suffered some of the worst quarterback play in the entire NFL. Yeah. He's still been fine still as been a good. wide receiver, too. Yeah, I mean, his hell, the beginning of the season with Darnold but... last year was really strong <laughs> <laughs> for DJ Moore, not for Darnold. Yeah, no, but ho- hopefully the situation's fixed. I think here everybody and their mom's going to be screaming to take Michael Pittman. Michael Pittman's been a player that's been skyrocketing in fantasy football drafts in both the redraft and in dynasty. Like if I pull up keep trade cut right now for whatever reason Michael Pittman's probably going to be near the top of this list. I personally couldn't get him here. I think I easily have to go with one of these rookies behind him and either a Garrett Wilson. I think Traylon Burks is already gone. Has he? Oh, no, he's here. He's, he's right top of the list, I believe. Oh, bam. Yeah. I know Travis Etienne's there. I am going Travis Etienne. Yeah. yeah. Was, okay. All right. Yeah. Ah, I didn't man. I didn't see that we had Travis Etienne still available. I was about to be like, hey, what, what, what about the E.T.? What about <laughs> my boy? I've, I've been we, we, we've made some trades for E.T. and FFPC this offseason. I've been I've been targeting E.T. a good bit throughout the offseason. I really like the prospect. I like the player. I feel like the value's down a little bit. For sure. Um, not too worried about the injury, although, you know, I guess there's not. Weird injury. Yeah, it is sort of a weird injury. But what's your what's your thoughts on E.T.? Obviously, you like him enough. Fifth round's pretty solid value there. Yeah, no, last year I was taking him above Kyle Pitts. It was obviously horrible looking back on it. But the reason is, is we really need to change how we're viewing running backs in the NFL and we don't necessarily need to be chasing the next Ezekiel Elliott, the next Dalvin cook. We don't need to try to chase the next guy that's going to get 20 plus touches a game. We just need to make sure they're getting the valuable touches. Like looking at Aaron Jones and Alvin Kamara to see what they've done over the past five seasons, how they've been elite in fantasy is they get every valuable touch in their backfield. They get every single target 
And most importantly, you can't just get every single target because if you get every single target and then that's it, you're Naheem Hines or you're J.D. McKissick. You have no value. Right. But you also need to get usage in the red zone. And Travis Etienne has the size and the passing game ability to get both of those. That's why we were drafting DeAndre Swift last season. Like mm-hmm. DeAndre Swift, Travis Etienne. Next year is going to be Jameer Gibbs. These are just like the new age Alvin Kamara, the new age Aaron Jones. What, yeah. what we say all the time. Travis Etienne, I, I love him here at the 503. I, I Me feel, too. I feel <laughs> I feel like every, I feel like everybody, we 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 said a lot on this show that that Travis Etienne was just too good for too long, and people just found reasons to talk themselves out of Travis Etienne being fucking awesome. Yeah, uh, they outsmarted themselves. So and then, and then they got kind of proven. You know, it's I hated all the people that were like, "See, you shouldn't take Etienne because he got hurt." It's like that's not a good argument. Come on, yeah, now. come on. Well, I do feel like I need a running back here. I feel like it's a little early to do Aaron Jones or Zeke. Which, which back to ETN, he said, if there was ever a season to miss, it was last season. He did say that. Urban Meyer. Um, I, like, that guy. I like Josh Jacobs a whole lot as a player. Um, I guess I'm okay taking him here. Montgomery's gone. That would have been a, a pick for me for sure. Um, I feel like he always perennially gets shit on, and he all he does is just produce in your fantasy lineup. I like guys that score points. And David Montgomery's <laughs> one of those guys. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab Burks here again. I just feel like there's good value there. You can't go wrong. We can start up to four wide receivers in this league. So we're good to go. And then Tua goes. Then Pittman goes. Now Jay Wayne's back on the clock. In between there, you had Derek Carr. So a little bit of a quarterback run throughout this. Then Terry McLaurin, Garrett Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, Montgomery. I took Burks. There goes Tua. Now you're on the and Pittman, and now you're on the clock. Um you said something about, you know, the Ravens, you know, being not shown that they want to use one running back. Going back to you took Brees Hall. I like Brees Hall. Obviously, they put the capital on him. But, you know, that is a, a Shanahan disciple that comes from there. And they're, they haven't been necessarily known to use one back the entire season. Is that something that comes into uh, the back of your mind at all, giving you any sort of worry about Brees Hall? Uh, personally, no. I think that you can go down narrative street and, like, you can talk – I would much prefer to look at Brees Hall and his prospect profile and what has led to through the first three seasons historically of running backs who score comparable to him with their size, athleticism, and workload in college. And I would rather combine that with what the team did. And the team went out there, traded up to grab him. So I, I'm not going to go through yeah. previous coaching. That's that's not the way I do it. That's okay. not the way I do it. I understand. Maybe I'm missing out on something. No, Maybe I- it's a leak in my game but I only have so much time to focus in on so many things that <laughs> there'll be some things that I miss out on. No, I, I, I agree with you. It doesn't give me any pause either. I just figured I would tie the two together and ask the question. Obviously you're not concerned about it. If you're all in at you know, middle of the second or how, how early would you have taken Brees? I'm um, probably right here. I think he does have to go but ahead of CMC. He has to go ahead of Austin Eckler as well. Mm-hmm. So uh, right in there. Okay. Javante or, or Brees? I think it's personal preference. I think before Melvin Gordon signed, you had to go Javante. Sure. After Melvin Gordon signed, it's up to you. I think it's Brees. I love it. All right, Jay Wayne, what you got? Man, I don't know. I don't know what to Ooh. do here. I got he got Judy. You got Godwin. Are you a Judy guy? Or are you? Or are you? I I feel like I might have heard you say that you don't fuck with Cortland Sutton. Oh, Cortland Sutton's a bum. <laughs> All right. So Judy's your guy, though. Is that that's if you got a if if you're would you trade a first for Judy? Um, twenty twenty three first. It's just tough because I'm viewing those picks as assets that are better kept on your roster, so you can go through and you can maximize their trade value during the season, and you can go and actually look at what players are productive and what situations are panning out. Go to the teams that thought they were going to be contenders, and all of a sudden are losing. Go, hey, I, I got a way out for you. Here, take this first. And I'm looking at Nick Chubb, who's the running back four on a points per game basis. That's who I need on my roster. So I really don't like trading future first round picks for Mm -hmm. players at this time of the season. If it's going to be a neutral swap, I'll do it if I'm getting an insane amount of value. But I think it's right there where it's a fair price point. But I'd rather just have the pick at this point. What about the 22 first? Would you trade 22 first? Once, let me pull up my dynasty rankings. I do believe that I actually have Jerry Judy right ahead of Chris Olave and Jameis Williams, probably about one spot ahead of them because you're looking at the elite level quarterback play. He's still extremely young. I mean, if you're looking at Jerry Judy, he's like a year younger than Michael Pittman. Mm -hmm. 
clicked on the wrong file there. Let me pull yeah, up. Yeah, we, we had an opportunity, and it's one of our cheaper leagues for like 50 bucks with a bunch of other guys in the industry, and we were uh, in, in communication with trying to figure out how to get Judy. Basically, it would have been Burks or Judy, uh, and we wanted plus for – for, to give up Burks, the rights to Burks basically didn't quite work out. And then the next guy behind us basically traded for, like, I believe, 1 6 for Jerry Judy on a super flex startup mock. So I think two, that's right in line yeah. with where he is. I don't think I could trade a top five pick for him because top five, you're getting Walker, Burks, Wilson. But once you're at 106, like, I'm looking at my rankings. I have Jerry Judy as wide receiver 19 in Dynasty, and I have Chris Olave wide receiver 21. Yeah. Waller or Hawkinson? Dynasty, I prefer Hawkinson. I mean, with Waller, I think you'd make the argument if it wasn't for Devontae Adams coming over. But Adams has historically had close to like a 29.5% target share in Green Bay. And even if you assume that comes down to like 27, 26%. So he's going to be soaking up so many targets. And on top of that, he is probably the best red zone threat in the entire NFL. So he's going to be a black hole coming over to Las Vegas. So I'm personally out on I mean, it's funny to say this now because his value's fallen so much, but I'm out on Hunter Renfro. I'm out on Darren Waller. Yeah. Yeah, we I believe we traded uh maybe like two one and and Renfro for Elijah Moore. This was pre draft. So obviously that stings a little with Garrett Wilson going there, but I mean Hunter yeah, Renfro. So, so I'm, good deal. Uh, yeah. So um Well, I could definitely take T J Hawkinson here. I like taking I like getting one of the top tight ends regardless of its tight end premium or not. I don't think that a guy like Dalton Schultz will probably make it back to me at the seven twelve. Um and then it really kind of falls off. I mean you got Goddard, I like Goddard, but then after that it's like you got Gasecki and Fan, that's all fine. It's just not that fun. Whereas Hawkinson, I feel pretty great about that for some reason. I got Jerry Judy in the queue. I got Chris Godwin in the queue. I love Chris Godwin, but he's coming off an ACL. Might not be right at the beginning of the season. And then Tommy, I don't know how long Tommy's going to play. Like, he was almost done. And then he might give us one more year. He might give us five more years. But I don't know how much I can fuck around with that. I mean, uh, it feels it feels Godwin it, seems like a screaming value here for how good he is and how productive he can be. But, yeah, I don't know. What are your thoughts here? I, I do think it's up to you. I, I don't think there are really any players that stand out as like must draft guys here at the five, six turn kind of seems like a dead spot. I love me some Chris Godwin though. I mean, if you look at Chris Godwin's three year finishes and his age, like over the past three seasons, no wide receiver that's 26, 27 years old has finished the way Chris Godwin has. That's going this late in startup drafts. Like you are 100% getting that injury discount with him at the five twelve. Yeah. Right. Right. I got also got Jameson Williams in the queue, Josh Jacobs. I could take Mac Jones, not knowing what to do here with this pick. Go ahead and grab a really strong third quarterback that I know I can can flip for something pretty good. Probably something higher when something shakes out. Like Team Six doesn't have a single quarterback. I'm going to go get something from him probably. I feel like, like you're probably doing? not a Mac Jones guy over there. I made the mistake earlier this offseason where I was actually taking Mac Jones around this range because right there, like the thought process you said out loud, that's exactly what would go through my mind. And the issue that I would find is Nobody I would take Mac him. Jones here and I'm fine with the Mac Jones value. But then later on in the draft, when you're looking at Tannehill in the 11th or 12th round, I'm like, yeah. should I really have taken Mac Jones where now I'm feeling pressured that I can't take a fourth quarterback, even though I love the value with where he currently lies? So it's interesting. I, I wouldn't fault anybody for taking Mac Jones. I was doing it earlier this offseason in this range. I've stopped doing it just because I found in my own startups I'm able to find quarterback value a little bit later. But I have never done uh, mock draft just autoed on sleeper. So I, I don't know how it's going to go. Yeah, I mean, we don't ever really do this either. I just figured it was an easy, fun way. Mostly just to have a conversation with you while we're doing this to bring up, hey, this guy or that guy, who do you like? Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. So. Uh, it's serving its purpose for me. We'll try to pick it up here and like get to the tenth round and get you out of here. We'll we'll move a little faster. So there goes Aaron Jones. No, Aaron, I took I took Godwin and Hawkinson. Aaron Jones is interesting to me. Like I feel like if you're ready to go, that's 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 a that's a strong that's a strong pick there. It seems like nobody wants anything to do with Aaron Jones or Zeke or guys who could potentially really help you fucking win right now. It's kind of wild. Yeah, and I just uh, you just put out a pretty strong video pulling for Aaron Jones. We had a conversation about him. I was kind of feeling down on him for dynasty terms, but you know, you put out the video about guys to trade for and you listed out all the stats that he put up with Devontae Adams out and then all the 
other running back carries that that people have gotten over the last few years that weren't going to Aaron Jones and you're like give AJ Dillon as many carries as you want I don't care because Aaron Jones is going to get like you said the quality touches uh, but what, what do you think about him in a startup right not necessarily trading for a contender team but they're they're in a startup so in a startup like I don't think you're ever really going to see Aaron Jones here go over Josh Jacobs like so whenever I'm saying yeah go out there and trade for Aaron Jones I love the idea but if I go through and if I pull up where he's going on keep trade cut right now like you're gonna see that he's going a lot further than this in the majority of leagues. Yeah, like I feel like he's usually in the eighth one. Like, it, yeah, in startups right now on keep trade cut, which I like using that more than sleeper. I think sleeper ADP is very bad to be honest. But he's going behind AJ Dillon, Sky Moore, Darren Waller, Antonio Gibson, Rashad Bateman, Tua Tagovailoa, Mike Evans, Hollywood Brown. So if you're looking at the players that really go before Aaron Jones. Usually, I think you want to be taking him until like the seven, eight turn, and yeah. there are, I'm fine with him Me with too. that price range. I feel You're like that's usually two years, but I feel like that's usually him and Zeke right there, and I, I fucking love that price. Like that's yeah. Give me that all day long. All right, so I took Josh Jacobs. Felt like that was good value. Maybe the, maybe he's not a Raider next year or whatever. I think he's still a good player. Still only twenty four. Um, there goes Keenan. There goes Judy. Uh, Devonta Smith, Darren Waller, Ezekiel Elliott. And now you're back on the clock. And I'm not feeling comfortable here, to be completely honest. I mean, I probably want to just go through and grab two wide receivers based on how the board's falling. I know most people would probably be screaming for me to go with an Elijah Moore here. I I have a hard time just because I'm not necessarily a believer in the offense. And on top of it, if we're just looking at Elijah Moore, I think that there's a very small percentage that he ends up being the wide receiver one for his own team. So if I'm looking at this, like keep trade cut right now, does have Elijah Moore as the best player as the 64th player off the board. I'm going to prefer Chris Olave. I, I think Chris Olave is a better player. Over Jameson, I, huh? Yes, I, I prefer Chris Olave over Jameson. I mean, if you're looking at both wide receivers in the Ohio State offense back in 2020, Chris Olave had like 39% of that team's receiving production on a per game basis where Jameson Williams couldn't get on the field and had to transfer. Still think Jameson Williams can be a fine wide receiver. I think Jameson Williams could be a better wide receiver from an NFL perspective than a fantasy football perspective compared to Olave. This goes back to what I was saying about Trey Lance, where, yeah, I mean, with Trey Lance, I'm not saying he's going to be a great NFL wide receiver. With Jameson Williams, I may take him here if he did not go. He yeah, did. I don't think he did. He went no, he right did after go. you. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, with Jameson Williams, it's almost the opposite end of the spectrum. I'm very confident that Jameson Williams can be a great receiver and do exactly what the Detroit Lions need for him to stretch the field and to be able to provide space underneath for players like TJ Hawkinson, Amon Ross St. Brown, and DeAndre Swift. But I'm unsure that actually leads to volume, which is going to directly correlate to what we need in fantasy in fantasy points so i'm more comfortable projecting chris Olave to be i don't want to say a target hog but to not just primarily be a deep threat in his offense taking away safety attention so i think james williams can be a great real life nfl wide receiver i am not too confident to say this is someone that's going to be dominant from a fantasy football perspective if that makes sense yeah well, i know i completely get it. I, I feel the pretty much i would say the exact same way about chris olave pretty much everything you just said <laughs> oh really um I, and i really like chris olave but i i feel kind of like i feel like jameson williams just has a different brand of kind of nastiness to his game where it's like he was he was the dude at some point he was going to ruin your fucking day and everybody knew it and nobody could do anything about it like and that that's just I think that's just a different kind. I mean, maybe not right off the rip in Detroit because maybe he doesn't quite have the quarterback to facilitate what you could possibly see from Jamison Williams. Um, and I, I think golf is just fine for fantasy purposes for his skill position players. We've seen it before. Um, but I don't dis. I would I would take Jamison Williams over Olave, but I pretty much the same thing, just reverse for me. Yeah, um, no, I have him ranked back to back in my rookie rankings, and I have him in the same tier as well. I, I wouldn't argue with anybody yeah. who wanted to have him. Like, let me pull this up. I have Chris Olave is the sixth player. Jamison Williams is the seventh. Yeah. All right. So after you, it went Jamison, Elijah, uh, Moore. That is Zach Wilson off the board. Um, Mike Evans, and now you're back up. Here, I think it comes down to three players: Hollywood Brown, Amad Ross St. Brown, and then you can scroll down a little bit further, and you can see Rashad Bateman there. Rashad Bateman's obviously appealing now that you have Hollywood coming over to Arizona. I am personally just going to go with Hollywood Brown. I think this team's good enough to compete right away. I think that with Hollywood Brown, he could be a top 12 wide receiver this upcoming season, at least through the first six weeks. And then he's still playing in one of the best offenses in the NFL that pushes the pace of play that's going to run a ridiculous amount of plays overall. Yeah. And I, I love me some Kyler as well. Yeah. 
I like Kyler, and I mean, I and they're boys back from Oklahoma. Feels like mm-hmm. Hollywood's still a pretty decent value as far as startability. Um, and then uh, Nick's Pickett. gonna miss six games. Yeah, Pickett then goes. Then St. Brown, who I was, you know, I was pretty pretty bullish on. I, I like. I didn't think that that was just a a fluke at the end of last season. I mean, uh, but. With the addition of Jamison a little bit, it's got to temper my expectations a little bit, but it's definitely has tempered everybody's expectations because he's he's down, you know, he's probably a top 50 player. Right. If you were drafting this. him off of what he did in the last six games of last year, he'd be, he'd be a, a top two player. Startup yeah. Pick. Yeah. yeah he'd not, he, there's already value built into his ADP pre draft, and now it's dropped even more because of Jamison. But I think. That could almost open up more things for him, and and if they're gonna use him the way they did, getting him involved in screens and and rushing attempts and and just moving him all over the formation and getting creative because he is a good yak guy. He does have red zone ability, and and he just got a little bit of a nastiness to his game for his size. With that PPR floor, I still very much in on Amon Ross St. Brown. So then uh, St. Brown, Mitchell, uh, Lenny goes. Then Darnell Mooney. I like Darnell Mooney a good bit. He's been a guy who I've been trading for a decent amount in rookie drafts. Once I get into that second round, I'm trying to figure out how I can put Darnell Mooney on my team instead of one of those uh, rookies. I feel like he's going to absolutely slay it um, this year, PPR-wise. Just a ton of volume. Um, so I'm back on the clock here. I kind of want to run him back. I actually kind of want to take a shot on Clyde Edwards-Alaire here. I don't know how you feel about that. Um, what's your thoughts on Clyde? I also kind of like Amari here. I feel like it's a decent stab. I'm fine with Clyde Rizzler. I mean, with CH, I think we can all say he's bad. It, can we be in agreement that he's bad? But it may not matter from a fantasy football perspective if he gets 60% of the snaps in Kansas City. Yeah. He just needs to be healthy, I think. You know, we've seen him healthy at the beginning of his rookie season. He was crushing. Uh, he was good. Anyway, I mean, he had 20 carries week one and he blew it up, didn't have a single catch and everybody was like losing their minds. And then it just he, he just hasn't been able to stay healthy for whatever reason. And I'm going to go ahead and take Dalton Schultz there. I uh, felt like there was getting down to the last couple tight ends that I'd want. After that, I'd probably punt. Uh, I feel like Schultz is just going to be a volume monster with with Gallup, maybe missing a bit of the season. And he slayed it with Dak last year. So I could have went Goddard or Schultz there. Flip a coin. I went Schultz. Maybe I feel a little bit better about Goddard long term, uh, but I like I like Schultz uh, as we're standing here. So there goes Cousins next, and now you're on for two. Let's uh, let's try to speed this thing up and get him out of here. We'll go to ten, round ten. Yeah, I'm thirsty for a running back. I only have one with Saquon, and and hopefully he stays healthy. That should be pretty good for me. But I feel like I should take a couple stabs here. Although Amari Cooper sitting there seems awful enticing you didn't seem like you were super in on amari oh amari cooper is one of my favorite players of all time like i started playing dynasty back in 2014 and obviously amari cooper came out 2015 was one of the best wide receiver prospects of all time i i fell in love with amari cooper like i, I love me some amari just have to be realistic with where he's at at his nfl career mm-hmm. at this point i mean he was gonna get cut by the dallas cowboys then the cleveland Browns said hell we'll, we'll take the contract right we'll take the contract send him over here so I, I love me some Watson. I would say if I'm picking at the 712, 801, and I took Deshaun Watson in the first, hell yeah, I'm going to Mari Cooper. I'm getting the stack. Yeah, like, I feel pretty good about that. I'm probably going to take him. I'm trying to figure out which one of these running backs. I got Clyde, I got Kareem Hunt, I got James Conner, and A.J. Dillon. And, well, and Kareem typically lasts until like 11, 10. Uh, he's one of my favorite stabs. Feels uh, a little too early to take a 26-year-old running back who's not the starter on his team. You know, Clyde, 23, and, and maybe them signing Rojo. That's that's a good insurance policy because they can't depend on Clyde. They know that. Uh, but it's not the worst indictment on Clyde, them picking up Rojo and pretty much not much else. So I, I, I could I could go ahead and take – I could take Clyde, and I'll, I'll take Amari. All right, and then go Sky Moore, and then A.J. Dillon. What's your thoughts on A.J. Dillon while I peruse through who I'm going to take here? I'm going to really like Dylan just playing in one of the best offenses in the NFL. I mean, will have an expanding role. I still think it doesn't hurt Aaron Jones too much. Of course, it's not great for Aaron Jones, but it's already baked into his price. With Dylan, I mean, if Aaron Jones were to go down, he's not going to get used a ton in the receiving game, but he showed us last year he can get up to three, four receptions a game. If you can get to three receptions a game and you're A.J. Dylan, and we can see 20-plus carries in the Green Bay Packers offense, hell, he has top 10 running back upside. 
And I really like the point you made in that Aaron Jones video where, you you know, all those years that Aaron Jones was finishing as a top, you know, five back, there was other other running backs on that team were getting 200-ish carries, you know? And, and if you give all those to A.J. Dillon, it doesn't affect Aaron Jones, like you said, because he's already dealt with other running backs getting that much volume. But if A.J. Dillon gets all that volume, then it's going to be great for A.J. Dillon. Yeah, exactly. It does come down to who's getting the red zone touches, I think. Historically, it's been Aaron Jones. I could see them both being on the field at the same time. You know, flex Aaron Jones yeah. out, and you got to worry about A.J. Dillon's massive thighs running it down your throat <laughs> or Aaron Jones cutting you up from the slot. Like, they're going to have to counter not having Devontae in there because Aaron Rodgers was notorious for checking out of a run play on first and third and goal or whatever on the goal line to throw it to Devontae Adams, you know, he's like, I'm just going to throw it to Devontae Adams, which I think, I don't know that we can count on Devontae Adams' target share, the same thing that he got, you know, or even dropping down. I think it's going to drop a decent amount. I mean, I don't know if Derek Carr is going to have the freedom to check out of Josh McDaniels' calls the way Aaron Jones <laughs> or the way Aaron Rodgers can to just chuck it, screen passes to, to uh, Devontae Adams because his A dot was pretty low based on all those targets and all those short passes that was basically an extension of the running game for the Packers but anyways I'm, I'm with you I like that AJ Dillon pick you know if he can get all that work it's a great offense great great scheme who'd you go with Casey? so I went with Bateman but I, I didn't really like anybody on the clock I really did kind of want to go James Conner but I, I didn't love taking James Conner in the eighth round it felt kind of gross uh, I did need another running back that was I got a little sweaty on the trigger there and just took Bateman to move this thing forward um Obviously, I do like Bateman there, but it just seemed like I'm kind of in a position here where I feel like all those running backs, I need to push them down a little bit. I mean, I guess I was just kind of starting to think maybe about a little bit of James Cook, even though I don't necessarily love the idea of James Cook going super high in rookie drafts. But I, I do need a, a running back, and, and he could be a nice little RB2 for you. Uh, what are your thoughts there? I, I love the Bateman pick. That's exactly where I would have gone. I mean, I think that once you grab your running back one here, I am personally not going to be drafting in a startup saying, oh, I, I need another running back or I need right. another tight end. Hell, it's May right, right. now. We got a lot of time. This. Yeah, you have. Get the value. Months, 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 and months until you have to actually hit submit on a starting lineup. So I'm, I'm taking I'm taking who I like and yep. then trading for someone after. Yeah. All right. So you're back up. It went Bateman, Connor, Watson, Sutton. Good for you. You don't have to pick the him because I know that would have been your next pick. Uh, James Cook, DeAndre Hopkins, uh, and now you're up. What, well, his hands, his hand placement are just too far apart. Yeah. Portland. What do you, what do you, what do you think about James Cook? We have kind of pulled everybody that's been on here. Oh, well, James Cook weighs less than 200 pounds. Has a BMI of 27.8. Historically speaking, running backs, unless you're Austin Eckler, unless you're Kenyon Drake, you can't be productive at that size. I think that he falls in the perfect situation for him to be able to overcome the lack of size and that he doesn't need 18 to 20 touches to be productive in the Buffalo offense just because how many red zone opportunities are going to be there. So it does come down to will Buffalo give him the role in the red zone or is it going to be Devin Singletary? I've been drafting a lot of James Cook and Devin Singletary in best ball formats this year. Mm -hmm. Sure. I think it's going to be difficult from a traditional league standpoint to know when you can start them because I never see Buffalo giving either running back 20 carries and you can project that going into the week. But I could easily see, oh, well, um, that's really weird. James Cook scored nine touchdowns this season. You never knew when they were coming, but right. In a best be, ball. In a best ball, ball. sure. Could yeah. Be three in one game. And 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 to his size, everybody wants to give him an added 10 pounds. If he just puts on 10 pounds, you know, it's yeah. like that's fucking hard. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, how's no, he gonna put on 10 pounds and still keep that explosive ability? Which, you know, every but working in his favor is are the are the the Jinkos, you know, the jeans the Levi's, that he has, yeah. the Levi's. <laughs> Uh, the good genes. They're yeah. like, did you know he's Dalvin Cook's brother? Like, what else do you fucking need to know? That's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, settle down. Don't take him in your first round of your draft. Wait till the wait till two one. That's where I'm comfortable <laughs> taking James Cook. All right. Well, so here I, here I have two very easy picks. The best wide receivers on the board: Mike Williams, Juju Smith Schuster, Brandon Ayuk. I took Justin Herbert. I took Trey Lance. We want to stack our quarterbacks with their wide receiver options that we can. That way we can consolidate our bets and get that correlation in the starting lineup. So we're going to take Mike Williams here and really hope that we get Ayuk making it back. Ayuk goes one pick before. <laughs> that sucks. And now we have to actually sit here and think a little. Yeah, old, old 
Trey and Ayuk was a big Trey proponent uh, last year. So I mean, yeah, Ayuk being such a Trey proponent got him fucking in the doghouse because like, goddamn, we're, potentially we're going least. with Jimmy. Shut your fucking mouth <laughs> about Trey Ayuk, like. <laughs> but then Ayuk's so good that he got himself out of the doghouse. Seems like nobody gives a shit about how good Ayuk is. So I. I <laughs> Well, they also like they want to point to right Dante now. Pettis, and it's like Ayuk is such a better receiver than Dante Pettis. Yeah, no, Pettis that's not got in the doghouse yeah. and couldn't get out. Not I, I'm just going to go Brady here. I don't. I don't want to have to look at the comment section and <laughs> just hear everybody screaming at me. You don't have to. And I passed on Brady. I'm in Tampa. Let's pay the man his respect. We'll take him at the beginning of the ninth. We'll only get a year or two. Yeah. All right. I'm back up. Uh, just kidding, what? comment section. Hit me up with, with the hate. You know, I, negative <laughs> comments, what they don't understand is that negative comments help the algorithm. It's like, get it out, Bo, but I don't understand what you're so mad about. <laughs> I'm going to come in here. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and grab Jahan Dotson. I like it. Spicy. I haven't even been looking, man. What, what should I do here? We're about to wrap this up. Got to take my guys. I got, I got a young, a fairly young squad. I don't have a whole lot of veterans here. I can, you know, buy my time, see what's going on. I like, man, I really like, I feel like Jahan Dotson in, in rookie drafts is the guy I've been targeting probably the most, just keeps getting pushed down to the second round. And we've seen how fast landscapes can change. I like that Jahan Dotson a whole lot uh, coming in. I think he can be super productive. Terry's got on a one-year deal. Curtis Samuel's never healthy. He could be out next year. Um, I mean, Carson Wentz is, is, isn't is great, but probably not as terrible as everybody makes him out to be, um, as well as they could be drafting another quarterback next year. So I'm, I'm in on Jahan Dotson. No, I'm right there with you. The fact that he falls to the second round of draft sometimes, like people will take Damian Pierce, people will take James Cook over him. It's laughable. I, I'm there yeah. with you. I like that. How about Christian Watson? What's your feelings on him? He's been a hot. I really, player. I really like Watson. Like I'm taking Christian Watson over Jahan Dotson just because if you're looking historically, I mean, even when it hasn't been Devontae Adams, Aaron Rodgers has always supported, always supported an elite fantasy wide receiver. So just I'm not that sure shot. if that's gonna yeah. be Christian Watson, right. but it's a. Higher than zero percent chance. <laughs> sure. All right, Man. Jay, you're up for you're up for two. We'll, we'll take this round out, and then we'll get you out of here. I really like Chase Claypool, but I also want to take George Pickens. I don't know who I would rather have. Uh, you know, I guess I guess that sounds silly. I guess I should take Claypool if I'm debating between George Pickens. Or maybe they're telling Claypool. you that they hate Claypool when they took Pickens. Or maybe they're telling you they don't want to pay Deontay Johnson. Probably. Or maybe they want to just keep winning and have three fucking good receivers on their team. You know. Uh, but they don't they don't overpay wide receivers because they can draft another good one. So I guess I could take the shiny new object. What are you doing with Michael Carter? Were you ever in on Michael Carter, first of all? My Michael Carter's dead. <laughs> like uh, Michael Carter's you, dead. I'm taking, I'm taking team, him best for your ball. team is he alive since you have Brees? Or no. I'm not fucking no. with it. Uh, he in, does in end up ball, going pretty late, but in best ball he's fine. Like as soon as the NFL draft happened, I was like looking across the landscape. And we were seeing that people were still taking Michael Carter like ahead of Tony Pollard, ahead of Alexander Madison. He is Tony Pollard in a worse offense now. That, that's how I'm viewing him. Yeah. So I'm fine. Like I've actually been um, in our best ball drafts I've been doing on the live stream. I've been taking a lot of Michael Carter, but that's because he falls to about like running back 50. And I think that's probably a little too late for him or probably appropriately priced than whenever you go wide receiver heavy early and you need someone that's going to have some kind of role and upside for more if the starter goes down, he's the perfect guy. But what I found is the dynasty community has not adjusted enough as the redraft or best ball community has with Michael Carter. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what to do. You're going to hit Claypool and Tony. Why, why didn't you just go with both um, Pittsburgh guys? I couldn't do it. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't feel good doing that. And it, we're, we're big. For, we're big Tony guys here. We just need him to get the the between the ears thing right. And I think the sky's the fucking limit. Figure over it there. out inside that helmet, man. Let me pull this up. I don't have this off the top of my head, but I have a very interesting Kadarius Tony stat for you. All right. Just, well, I'm going to take Davis Mills here in the tenth round. Just feel I did, like I did think about Jameis. Feel like he's. I've seen him traded in super flex leagues for first round picks in this draft um i feel like there's some value there he was a really highly recruited prospect they stuck with him they could certainly change quarterbacks if it doesn't go well this year but i feel like i'll take a little risk here and uh see what happens okay before i make my pick before i even look at who's on the board i, I want to give you this Kadarius tony stat i found this on rotoviz when i was writing our draft guide about last week 
So here are the wide receivers that have had that had more yards per route run than Kadarius Tony last year. Okay, it's going to be a long list, but I just want to point out the names: C.D. Lamb, Tyree Kill, T. Higgins, Lockett, Chase, A.J. Brown, Justin Jefferson, Antonio Brown, Devontae Adams, Debo Samuel, and Cooper Cup. All elite. He must be good. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not saying he's guaranteed to be good, but I was like, oh my god. You would not assume Kadarius Tony is in that range of that list. When you see him cutting up digs, just the when, corner, just when you, just the way he moves out there, there's he, just not that many guys that move the way he moves out on the field. He's here, and then all of a sudden he's there, and the defender is not there. You know what I mean? Like it's just, it's just the twitch is insane. Yeah. The twitch is fucking ridiculous, and he's he gets get, gets open at will and if yeah. and if there wasn't the concern if there wasn't can he the just new not coach be an trying asshole. to trade him like, if he didn't <laughs> not show up to volunteer yeah. workouts and all the shit he, yeah. he i couldn't get him at 10 one right when, when when he was putting up those yards per route run when healthy last year you couldn't get him he was like oh shit if you got tony you better hold tight because this man looks unguardable out there yeah so I'll take a little swing. I took two swings. I don't know. I don't love it, man. All right. So after Mills, it went Hunt, Gasecki, Pickens, uh, Damian Pierce, Rashad White, and now you're back on the clock uh, with your lat. We'll, we'll, we'll cap it here at 10, and we'll call it a day. Just because I haven't taken a tight end yet, and there are a couple guys I love on the board. I love me some Cole Komet. I love me some Irv sure. Smith Jr. Agree. We'll, we'll go Cole Komet here at the 110. If I hadn't taken Dalton Schultz, that would be a guy that I would be definitely looking into. I like Cole Komet a whole lot. What what intrigues you about Komet? I mean, he's the really only, only pass catching option outside of Darnell Mooney. Right. I'm, I've been one of the biggest Justin Fields haters for a very long time. But at the end of the day, it's still an NFL offense. Yeah. There has, there has to be some targets to go around and it's not like Darnell Mooney is going to have 180 targets this upcoming season. It's not like Byron Pringle is going to get it. It's not like Velas Jones is going to get it. Cole Komet didn't score a touchdown last season, which you know is changing. He right. had a really good target share, which is predictive season to season. Touchdown rate isn't. That touchdown rate should dramatically come up this upcoming year. And the target share, if it goes up slightly going into year three, which you'd assume from a tight end, I, I think there are a lot of things working in the right way for Cole Komet. Yeah, and you, you saw it kind of get go, be on an uptick near the end of the season there for Komet as well. So things trending in the right direction. That I agree. You want to make your you want to make one more since you're here since it was just the turn. Oh yeah, well I'll make one more. Um, just just because I love them equally and I have to show them some respect. We'll go Irv Smith Jr. here at the eleven oh three. Feel like there might be. I feel like some people get pretty outraged about Irv Smith. Some people love him. You just you like the opportunity that could be there for him. Yeah, I mean, this is a tight end that if you go back and if you look at 2020, his second season, he actually was right there and leading this team at the tight end position of receiving guards. And Irv Smith Jr. is surprisingly young. He was drafted yeah. at 20 years old out of Alabama in 2019. He's right now 23. And back then, when he was 21, he averaged more receiving yards per game than Tyler Conklin. Now, Conklin's a decent tight end. Yeah, and sure. he was right there neck and neck with Kyle Rudolph. I mean, Kyle Rudolph's prime as well. So you remove both those tight ends off the offense and he should be 100% healthy coming into this season. Really like Irv Smith Jr. Yeah. All right, man. Well, that's going to wrap up our, uh, our draft segment here. Like I said, we've moved a little slow. I just wanted to really use it as a springboard to talk about a bunch of different guys. Dip our toe back in the uh, startup world because we've been so in the rookies really appreciate all the time if you're not already checking them out go basically just type in you got the fantasy flock the dynasty flock uh he's got all the flocks on lock um and as you can see he was outstanding on this show he's a just, well-oiled machine yeah man <laughs> super impressive over there and thank you so much for all the time no thank you so much for having me all right man have a good one